Hi, and welcome to TTELT, Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers, a program of educators worldwide. I'm your host today, Melanie Gobert. Hello, this is Melanie Gobert, your host for today's podcast episode of TTELT, a program of educators worldwide. Our guest today is Rania Jabber from the American University in, Kong, uh, in Cairo, and Rania will be talking to us about optimal learning with brain breaks. Over to you, Rania. Thank you, Melanie. Hi, everybody. So uh, I thought of this topic because I wanted to capture a phenomenon where students are tired and exhausted and not paying attention in our classes and they're not motivated. So basically I talked about a couple of relevant theories and I shared um, three brain break tasks to help teachers target this problem. Um, so at the beginning, people might wonder what are brain breaks? And they are basically small mental breaks to help students refocus and to avoid uh, fatigue, especially cognitive fatigue. We all know that there is a problem in our classes. And I, th I think people who teach everywhere in anywhere, big classes, small classes, the students have a limited attention span. And at the same time, we have a lot of material to deliver and we're eager to deliver all this material. And so there's an information overload. So what happens is that the students often are tired, exhausted, they're not concentrating, even if it's in a morning class, let alone if it's an evening class, things are gonna be really very hectic for them. So I brought uh, uh, into the focus of my presentation, um, the idea of the cognitive load theory, which basically is an old theory, 1998, by John uh, Sweller. And basically, it talks about how working memory has a limited capacity to process information. And uh, we as teachers, and here is the practical part or the uh, pedagogical part, uh, have to work hard in reducing the load by doing simple things. Make sure what we're teaching is related, relate the different uh, bits of your lesson to what came before, what's coming after. Um, give them a lot of context clues and um, maybe have them integrate the skills. And this is a very important point. So they don't split their attention. We're now doing the grammar and we're, later we're doing writing. No, we're doing the grammar because it feeds into the writing. It will make us better writers. Um, we're now reading an article. And of course, this will give us ideas and vocabulary to start writing later on. So linking and making connections uh, enables the student to uh, understand better. And of course, if there's a lot of things that we do that are maybe unnecessary, irrelevant, redundant. So I, I'm a firm believer of less in, less is more, you know. Um, the other thing, I, the other theory I focused on and I mentioned is Krashen's famous effective filter hypothesis. And just to remind people, it's talking about the, uh, it's, a meta, it's, a, it's a metaphor. Uh, this effective filter, filter is like a barrier which stops learning uh, students or learners from learning and acquiring language. And it happens when they are stressed, when they're exhausted, when they're not motivated. So the learning is impeded or hindered. Um, so I suggested a couple of things, for example, um, making check-ins and they go by the name in the literature of uh, bell ringers, for example. Uh, asking students about their this famous activity where we ask students, tell me about a rose in today's class and tell me about a thorn in today's class, meaning give me a positive thing, something you've learned, something you've acquired, something you're, you know, feel good about and something that you don't feel good about. So this is one way to get them to relax and let down their guard and maybe try to, um, you know, calm down and digest more of the material. 
Another thing I mentioned was basically self-reflection. And it's an excellent way to um, get students to pour out what's on their mind. It's like a, a brain dump. We call it a brain dump where students basically, you know, uh, talk about their feelings, talk about their thoughts about what happened in class or after a task. So I would say something like, tell me three things you did well today in class, or you did well in your essay, or tell me one thing that you need to still work on. Or an, at another time, I can just basically ask them to self-reflect by saying anonymously, give me a question, ask me a question. And I call it question for my teacher. So these kind of little tasks go a long way in getting the students to relax and enjoy and learn more. And of course, we, we can't uh, not mention the idea of gamification. I'm a firm believer in the idea of gamifying your class. And it's, it's the simple definition is, you know, taking something that's not a game and adding game elements to it. It doesn't have to be something, you know, elaborate or, or high tech, but something as simple as, you know, dividing students into groups and having them compete to do something. Uh, what is very interesting about brain breaks is that the, the responsibility is, is on us teachers. We need to be, um, to monitor the students. And when we notice that they are beginning to, we're beginning to lose them, they're tired, they're stressed, they're exhausted, whatever it may be, we need to immediately be able to adapt our lessons on the fly when the students need a, 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 a brain break. Another way is also to basically, when we prepare our classes, when we prepare our tasks, we build in spaces or breaks between tasks as a way to shift, you know, the, 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 the focus. It, 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 it's, a, it's a good way to give them a space. Um, I come from a British system where I remember my teacher um, used to say, let's have a think. And when she said, let's have a think, at the time I was like, great, I can rest a little bit and just, you know, compose myself. But now that I'm a teacher, I realize that it's a carefully uh, interspersed break from the monotony, from the stress, from the information, you know, throwing at, at the students' information. And it really helped me reinvigorate myself. I use it often. I just have them do something as simple as that. Let's pause and let's think. I'll give you an example. I teach listening as, as an advanced class um, and they're supposed to listen to a video, take notes and um, then write a summary of the video. It's an advanced writing class and um, it's not an easy skill for them to watch a video for, I don't know, seven minutes, eight minutes and take notes and then put everything uh, aside and put pen to paper and try to summarize using their notes. And they find it very challenging at the beginning. So one thing I, I do with them is that basically um, play the video silently first without any audio, get them to watch the, 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 the images and the, what comes on, on the screen, you know, um, pictures, images, writing, whatever. And then let them doodle a little bit and take notes silently um, to try to capture at least the gist or the general idea. Get this reduces the stress that the students feel. They don't feel they have to take down every single word. So it's like a little intro, a little you know break from the stress. And then normally I play the video with the sound and everything and they take notes. And then and after often, that- Excuse me for interrupting. How often would you do, and during the class, is your class one hour or two hours? And how often would you do these brain breaks? No, my class is an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So I would do this break, at least brain break like three times. 
three times. How, Every many, half how many hour. students do you usually have in a class? I, we have intensive, uh, it's an intensive course. I have, uh, currently as we speak, I have 20. I have and, 20 uh, what, what would you do for students who, who weren't uh, engaged with the brain break? How would you bring them on board? What I do is I notice, I, I keep an eye and I notice who is on task and who's not, who's tired and who's not. And I create, put them in small groups or pairs, depending on the number. So twos and threes. And I get them to compare their notes with each other. Compare. So the student who was slacking or was still too tired or was still whatever, gets a little bit of scaffolding and help from the other, you know, from the others. And then I make a round drop and I change the groups again. So they end up with another pair or another partner. And this kind of like, oh, they fill in the gaps and they catch up and they kind of, you know, um, feel that, oh, yes, I'm not lost. I'm not at a loss, I'm not lost. And I also, I think this is a point of, uh, 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 important point to focus on, carefully selecting the pairs and the groups. This is extremely important. Uh, get to know your students early on. And when you know them, try to help them by putting the you know, stronger student with a medium student or a medium student with a weaker student and always vary. Don't keep your groups set or say something like, okay, sit in pairs, the friends are gonna sit next to each other <laughs> and they might not get much uh, benefit. Okay, thank you so much for joining us, Rania from the American University of Cairo, talking about uh, optimal learning with brain breaks. Uh, this has been your host, Melanie Gobert. I'd like to thank you on behalf of TTELT, which is a program of educators worldwide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Share with us how you are using these tips. Leave us a comment or voice message on social media, or at ttelt.org. Thanks for joining this episode of TTELT, brought to you by Educators Worldwide. Follow, like, and subscribe to TTELT on your social media, and try a new teaching tip today.